All praises to the Most High Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Shabbat Shalom to my Hebrew brothers and sisters. It is another grand, blessed day that the Lord has allowed us, of course, to be alive. I tell you, He has been good to us, and we just praise Him and we honor Him and lift Him up and glorify Him, because He is a God that is faithful. Yahweh is faithful to his word. Scripture says, faithful is he that promise, and he shall do it. So we trust in the Lord on those premises of his promises, and we just lean in and trust him with all our heart. You know, trust in him with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding. Scripture says, and he shall direct our path. Today we want to be talking about for the Shabbat, the 12 gates that is prepared. There are 12 gates that are prepared for the children of Israel, the eternal Jerusalem that the Lord is preparing for his people. And that is something that we should be excited about because... After all these years and so many things have happened to our people, our nation, but yet the Most High promised us a new Jerusalem, a better place, a better home. He has promised in his word. How shall I say I go to prepare a place for you? He said, I go to prepare a place for you. In his father's house, he said, are many mansions. If it were not so, he would have told us. Because remember, after a while, he said, we are not servants, but we are his friends. Even though we are his servants. But see, he, he began to develop this relationship with Israel. And so he's gathering us. He's gathering us. He's gathering the elect. We are rising. We are awakening. And there's nothing that anybody can do about it. I don't care how mad the government is, how you're mad the, na- the, 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 the nations around this nations and every nations are, you know, feeling about who we are. Trying to put another label on us and call us black Hebrew Israelites. No, we are Israel. We're just Hebrew Israelites. Black is a condition. Black is a color of a condition. So we we know who we are. We are rising. We, We can't be fooled anymore. The blinders are off. The blinders are off. Yes. For many of us, you know, the most the most high is calling. He's calling. That's why it behooves our people, our nation. Like if you hear the Lord calling you, you see what's going on. The information is out there now. The scriptures are out there that validates, confirm who we are. Don't ignore those scriptures. That's why the Bible says, he that have not the spirit of the Lord is none of his. He said, because my sheep hear my voice. They know the sheep of the Lord know his voice in this time of awakening. Because, see, the Lord is preparing New Jerusalem for us. It's 12 gates. No heathen getting in those gates. Some people say, well, what about the ones that's cleaving? We'll see how the Lord deal with that. But the 12 gates are for the 12 tribes of Israel. Of Israel. The blood born elect that the most high knows who they are. Then you have the 144,000 of the priests, high priest elect of God, Yahweh, that bore his word, that led his people. I mean, who, who, who going to be a part of that 144,000 of the leaders? Those are the leaders of Israel. Who scattered, that's putting in the work, that's doing the work. That's who they are. From the bottom of their heart, the ones that the Most High has raised up 
raised up. I mean, they working, they wake, they waking up the nations. You know, every day they're about the most high's business to wake up the nation so we'll know who we are. You see how the people did not want to know, want us to know who we are. That's a serious situation that millions of people all over the world knew who we were and who we are. Biggest conspiracy known to mankind of who we are. Now they're afraid that we're awakening up by the masses, you know, because listen, the most high didn't have no heathens to rule over us forever in this kingdom. See, we we about the kingdom of the Lord. We we of a different kingdom. That's why he said, just give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. But see, we are we of a different kingdom. We have a heavenly call. We are the righteous kingdom. That's why the Bible says, you know, the kingdom of heaven is not about meat and drink, but of love, joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. We have a different kingdom because we got to make the kingdom. We got to get into the, those 12 gates. And we're going to read it right now. Who's not going to get into the gates? Who qualifies to get into the gates? It's 12 gates. He didn't say the gates, you know, he, you know, there's gates for the Gentiles as far as the heathen nation. He didn't say that. The Most High didn't delegate no gate for the heathens. They are fooling themselves. How? How so? How so? How? The 12 gates are for the 12 tribes of Israel. He didn't say for the 12 tribes of Edom, for the 12 tribes of, you know, all of these heathen other nations around. He didn't say for Ammon. He didn't say for, you know, any other nation but Israel. He didn't say for the Amorites. He didn't say for the Hittites. He didn't say the 12 gates for the Hittites. The Hivites. He didn't say that. He said the 12 tribes of Israel that are scattered, scattered, scattered. See, we were scattered. Some people probably say, well, how you know you Israel? How you know you are the bloodline of Yahweh Shai? How do you know? See, that's their premises to try to debunk who we are. But see, we are known by the spirit. So you got to know the most high in that, on that level. See, if one of our nation of people denying already, see, they, they ain't got the spirit. You see, we got to see the Lord got to, you know, they got to get inside with the spirit. See, and yes, grafted in from the adoption with, you know, through the adoption of Christ. I mean, coming back home from sinning. Coming back home from being in the world and being blind and taking on the heathen customs like the hell of day of Thanksgiving. We, they just, you know, honored or, you know, took, partook in the feasts of Thanksgiving. It's abomination to the Lord. But you're going to know your Israel by the spirit. See, see that bloodline go way back. The most high knows. That's why the Bible says, you know, as many as he call. See. To them, he gave the power as many as believe to them. He gave the power to become the sons of God of Yahweh. You first still have to believe that you Israel. <laughs> you see. Because Jesus looked like us. Yahweh shy as they, you know, <laughs> they call him Jesus, right? Oh, that's another situation we're going to get into. How the world and the gospel just put Jesus, Jesus, Jesus all in there. You know, had us calling on Jesus and most house with us anyway. No matter what they try to do to fool us. But his power is in his real name. He put his power in Jesus because that's all our people know, right? But he said, you will know my real name. So now we got to call him what? Yahweh Shai. You got to get used to saying Yahweh Shai. 
But for the church, he's Jesus. That's all they know. They're not coming off of Jesus. So sometimes, you know, you get a new listener listening. They don't know who Yahweh Shai is. Yeah, that's his real name, Aramaic and Hebrew. And, you know, we go all the way back. We want to know the real name. We should start writing in it. But, you know, we don't want to get off the subject here. But, yeah, we, 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 you would know. We know him by his spirit. As many as he called. As many as he called. I got to look at that. We got to look at that. Because when you get, you know, on that last day, I'm, tr uh, I'm just trying to tell you. You're going to try to get into the gate. Let's get this right here. As many as receive him. Right? Let's get it in King James Version. So you got to receive him. You got to receive that you are the bloodline of Yahweh Shah Christ. You got, you have to receive that, right? You just can't. You're just not going to be able to just say you're a believer. And on that day, you say, well, I didn't really believe that we were the real Jews of the Bible. I didn't really believe that. You know, 12 gates going to be sitting in front of you. And you're going to say, I didn't really believe, Lord, that we were the children of Israel. So I didn't believe that you only came to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I didn't believe that. You know, many people are going to say that. But what if your salvation depend on that? Because look what it says right here. John chapter 1. We're looking at verse 12. But as many... As received him. Okay. Now we got to break this down. We get, we're going back to Revelation. Just hold on here. But as many as received him. Now if you think about it. A lot of people. They're receiving. Seja Borgia. Mm -hmm. Seja Borgia. Or some people say Seja Borgia. Right. They're receiving that Jesus. They're not receiving the Jesus that look like us. Because first of all, a lot of them don't believe it and they don't, they don't believe it and they're not going to receive it. They believe that Christ could come and save anyone. They're not going to believe that Yahweh Shah Christ is his real name and they're not going to believe how he's described in the, in the book of Revelations. They're not going to believe. They don't want that Jesus. They want him to look like C.J. Bourget. My grandmother had a picture of C.J. Bourget in her, in her living room. My mother had a, C, a picture of C.J. Bourget in her living room. Caucasian, stringy hair. That, that is the picture where the scripture says, you know, how they painted the images they consulted with one another and they, they, they painted the Im images in their likeness, right? So we got to make sure we're receiving the real Yahushai, but the church say Jesus. We got to make sure that we're receiving him. So the scripture says here, John 1 and 12 again, but as many as receive him. Are you going to receive the black Jesus, so-called black Jesus? Are you going to receive him because he looks like us? Or are you going to deny him because, you know... Some people are cool. They don't want them to look like us. They got friends that's, um, you know, that look like C.J. Boje. You know. So they, they're not going to want him to look like us. At all. Mm -hmm. So we got we to realize that. But again, what the scripture say, but as many as receive him to them. Gave he power to become the sons of Yahweh. Yeah. See, that's the power. That's the power. See? That is the power that the Lord is giving to the saints. To them he gave the power to become the sons of Yahweh. 
So, what is the Lord saying here? What is the Lord saying here? You got to accept him as he is. As he is, scripture says, so are we in the earth. Because when he comes back, you want to be able to receive him just as he is. We got to be able to receive him just as he is. Not in the form of what we think he should look. We got to be able to receive him just as he is. The Bible says nobody else get you not nobody is getting into the kingdom if they not you're not welcome into the kingdom when you don't come through the right way. Your beliefs can't be off. Your belief can't be off when you're coming into the kingdom. We want to walk up to the 12 gates, but you don't believe he look like us. Or he, you know, people want to get in, but they don't want him to look like us. They don't, they don't want to believe you. How shy, you know, we are of the bloodline of him. See, 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 let me say this. A lot of people thought we were abandoned by the Lord. That's why the scriptures say, have, have he cast off Israel? Have he cast off Israel? He have not cast off his people. We are the people of the book. He haven't cast us off. Matter of fact, we are rising. He said he's going to rise up the tents of Judah first. That's what he said. And that's what he's doing. Because see, the enemies of Israel are trying to strengthen themselves in wickedness and come up against us. You see? Now we go to verse 13 here in John 1 and 13. And let's, let's look at this verse as well because this is going to help us out. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of Yahweh. Why? Because that's how you're gonna know him. By his spirit. Cause not all Israel, are Israel. The scripture says that. So how do we know that we're the real Jews? How do we know that we're Israel? How do we know that we're gonna be a part? Of the, the 12 tribes of Israel. How do we know? It's by his spirit. It's by his spirit. <laughs> it's awakening. Yeah. See for me. It's long before I even met a Hebrew Israelite. <laughs> that the Lord was awakening. My spirit to who I am. Way before. So when the when the time comes and you know we're introduced and we're we're set down and shown the scriptures more clearly, it all connects. It all connects. It's a powerful experience when the Most High bring you into your biblical heritage as the twelve tribes of Israel. Powerful experience. One that can't be denied. So you met, you're dealing with the most high when it comes to the 12 tribes of Israel. You're dealing with the most high straight up, out straight front. You know, you just, you're dealing with the most high Yahweh, the God of creation. You know, I was listening to some things that was strolling through the internet the other day. And people can really have it off. They can really have it off. And then you have some people, they almost got it. Oh, they almost got it. But they off. When you have a divine awakening, there's no, there's no contemplating. There's no guessing again, wondering. It's none of that. You know that you know that you know that you know that you know. Because, see, the scriptures is line upon line, precept upon precept. 
there there is no faultiness in the word of the Lord. It's infallible. Infallible truth. See, that's why when the people try to hide it, it just surfaced. Even people from other nations that knew we were the 12 tribes of Israel, that they knew we were the real Jews, you know, they just leaked it out, seeped it out, couldn't keep it to themselves, really want to tell somebody. They knew as well. They knew who we are. I know, again, I said it on another broadcast. Someone told my daughter, I have a big, big secret. Big secret all over the world. So, as he said that he had a big secret, that he knows a big secret. I think I said I told the story before. So I told my daughter, I said, ask him, is the big secret that so-called black people are the real Jews of the Bible? So when she asked him, he didn't say anything. And he stopped telling her that. He was telling her that for a few days. And after she mentioned it, he never said anything about it anymore. <laughs> because he wanted that he wanted to maintain his big secret. I'm gonna get back to the scripture in a minute. We're gonna start in Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. So you can turn your Bibles there. But I want to say this again. Another situation where, you know, again, people want to tell you. But they can't t they tell you or something. They want to tell you. Some of them, you know, they don't know how to tell you. I remember I had this little boutique. I was selling my, you know, floor, floral arrangements, decorations, you know, because I'm a decorator and a florist by nature. And I had land a little spot at this boutique, beautiful boutique. I was just so fond to be in there. Nice jewelry, clothing. Um, antique, you name it, and thousands of it, okay? And I had land a spot in there with my items. And so, you know, I think I stayed there maybe a year. And it was time for me to move on. You know, I was just getting my feet grounded where I lived at and in the community and was just trying out different methods for my business. And so I had the menorah sitting in front of my booth on a shelf with some pearls hanging down from it. It was very beautiful, just so beautiful. And I loved it putting those pearls on there. And I remember um, I was at a military base, and that's when I put the pearls on there, you know. And I was, you know, had it for sale. Didn't know I was Israel. And a few people were coming in and saying, oh, I love your menorah. And these were like people that was like 75, 80. They were like older people. They was like, oh, that is a beautiful menorah. Are you Jewish? And I was like, no, no. And um, I was like, are you? And they was like, oh, no, 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 no. But it's like three people came up to me as soon as they came in the door. And they were asking me, am I Jewish? Am I a Jew? And I was like, no, no, you know, because I did not know. So that was the first sign that I had to reflect upon after I became aware of who I was. The Lord enlightened me and awakened me that I was the real Jews of the Bible. And so prior to that, again, when I get back to this menorah in front of my boutique, you know, on a stand right in front of my boutique. One of the ladies, she owned the place. She said, Linda, she said, I have a lady that wants to know how much do you want for your menorah with the pearls on it? I was like, okay, she want the pearls too. She was like, just give me a price. So I gave her a price. And um, she said, okay, I'll get back with you to let, let you know what she said. So about two weeks went by. And so finally, um, she came to me and she was like, Linda, um, the lady said that um, 
um, she she's going to pass on the manure or something like that. And then she emphasized, she said, Linda, you keep that manure. She said, that's for you. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm tearing up a little bit because she put such emphasis on it like three times. She said, that's for you, Linda. You keep that menorah because that's for you. And I didn't go back and forth with her to say, okay, I dropped the price. I didn't do any of that because the way she said it meant so much to me that she knew that I was an Israelite. She knew that I was the real Jew of the Bible. She said, that's for you, Linda. You keep that menorah. That's for you. And they treated me with such respect there, you know. Because people that know that we are the 12 tribes of Israel, they have a different... Um, uh, personality, persona, attitude towards us, you know. That's why the Bible say those that bless Israel are going to be blessed and those that curse Israel will be cursed. Just letting it play it out. He just letting it play out because he already know. See, some people from the heathen nations, they want to be prideful and arrogant and evil, you know. They got this, that evil through their blood from the ancestors teaching them all of this hatred towards us not knowing that we are the people of the book it is us and we're not veering away from that we're not swaying away from that we're the people of the book now you come into we come into understanding who we are we got to get it together you know as far as you know the external appearance we in this land of our captivity for a long time but what matters is our obedience now. And what are we going to do about following through with the commands of the Lord that in Christianity, in the churches as well, a lot of it was not taught to us. So now we back on track, right? So let's go ahead and read chapter uh, 21 of Revelation to get a deeper understanding of the 12 gates. Because everybody's not going. Because we just read. As many as receive him. You got to receive Yahweh and who he say he is. How you look at everything. So Revelation chapter 21 verse 1 says, John, this is John the Revelator. He said, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. So there's a glory coming down. There's a glory coming down. From the fourth heavens, so the fifth heavens, however far the Most High is up there, He is bringing a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Some coming, y'all. We go to verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Yahweh out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. In his glorious appearance. That's what this means. In his glorious appearance. Full of light. Hallelujah. Full of light. I'm here to tell you that his face is going to be filled with light. Full of light. Let's read it again. And I, John, saw the holy city. New Jerusalem. Coming down from Yahweh out of heaven. It's full of light. It's white. It's full of clouds and beauty. It's adorned. 
He's adorned in his majesty, in his glory. Coming down from Yahweh. The new Jerusalem is coming down from Yahweh out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. Beautiful long train. Long train on that dress. Pure white. Without spot or blemish. Pure, holy, clean, righteous. Prepared. See, he's the bridegroom. See, he's the bridegroom. The holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Yahweh out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband, for the bridegroom. You see that? Verse 3 says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Yahweh is with men. That's why he tabernacle among us. He's in our hearts. tabernacle of Yahweh is among us. Behold, the tabernacle of Yahweh is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and Yahweh himself shall be with them and be their God. He's already with us. He's with us. He's tabernacling with us. That's how we discern. We know. We know we were Israel. So many ways the Lord has already prepared us and let us know that who we are. Because he's tabernacling with us. Verse 4 says, and Yahweh shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. The pain, the injustice, all of the pain that the saints are going through. You know, the tears, he's bottled them up. All of the tears, he's wiping them away and bottled them up. Bottled, he's put them in bottles, bottled them up for that great day of judgment where he poured out even the prayers of the saints. For that great day of judgment upon the earth. He said there shall be no more death. Oh, this is a beautiful day. This is a beautiful day. When New Jerusalem come down. It's a beautiful day. No more death. No more killing. No more heathen. No more demons. No more wicked enemies in the world. The Most High have decreed when New Jerusalem come, it's going to be all new. Behold, all old things are passed away and behold, all things are new. He got a plan for the saints of Yasharala that are holding on. The patience of the saints. We got to endure. Trust in the Lord. Keep our minds and, and our hearts focused on the eternal he fixed the natural. We're going through things. This is the land of our captivity. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. The wicked are going to do all they can to steal, kill, and destroy. Christ said, I came, I've come, I've come, he said, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. We got to put our faith, our trust in the Lord, and let him do the work on the enemies. He says it's going to be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, no more pain. We won't feel pain anymore that'll make us cry for injustice being done to our nation, our people, and our loved ones passing on. We won't cry like that anymore. The Most High has given us this peace. This peace that surpasses all understanding. We ought to expect the new Jerusalem. Come down to the earth. That's why our saints got to keep praying to live righteous so he can come. Maranatha come. That's what the church call it. Maranatha. Come. 
Lord, come. But we say, come, Yahweh Shai, come. Lord, please come. Hasten. He said he will hasten to perform his word. That's why we got to pray his word. Stay in his presence and pray his word. He can hear all of the saints of Yasharala. We are rising. He's awakening up to us to know who we are. So he can come on, come down. He's got to do it. The dry bones, the valley of dry bones are awakening. He's blowing upon us. He's breathing life into us. By showing us the word of the Lord of who we are. He's saying, live, come off the shackles in the mind, depression and slavery and all of these evil Jim Crow, uh, you know, lies that they have put on the most highest people. Come from up under that and awake. Shake yourself, Israel, and awake. Bethink yourself and shake yourself and come out from the lies that the enemy has put in our people's mind. You know, I was thinking about that. And we're going to get that. Let me finish reading this and then I'll tell this story in a minute. He said, neither shall there be any more pain. No sickness and diseases. The formal things are passed away. No more pain. No more pain. Well, there's pain in your heart. Physical pain. Spiritual pain. Mentally pain. Or no more pain. The Lord knows those that are his, the Bible says. He knows. You must prepare yourself to be one of his. As many as he called to them, he gave power to become the sons of God, of Yahweh. As many as receive him. And the Bible said to those who he called. He predestined. He called them, he predestined, he justified, he glorified them. Sanctify the people that he know belongs to him. You can't get around it. There's only going to be a selected few at the gates. Everybody not going because everybody hearts are not going to be prepared to let go of the evil. Verse 5 says, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. That's why he said, Endure hardness as a good soldier. So like, yeah. I was thinking about my grandmother, both grandmothers, but particularly on my mother's side. I spent more time with her. Both of them kind of equally, but, you know, grandmother on my mother's side was special, real, more special because she was living a godly life more, a more of a godly life for the Lord. You saw it, even though she had that siege of Borgia up there, she didn't know any better. So I started thinking about, wow, how did she come through these times of oppression with the enemy back then? And the, my great grandmother... They survived. They all, my grandmother had 13 children. Raised them well. And was married to a man that she had all the 13 children by. Her husband. They survived. Just, just. Thinking about how they came through that, that, that oh, evil oppression that the Most High made our nation endure. Verse 6 says, and he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is, that is a thirst of the fountain of of the water of life freely. The word, that's the word. The fountain of life of the water is the word. The fountain of life, the water of life, the fountain of the water of life, that's the word of the Lord. 
Because now are you clean through the word. He said we are clean through the word. He's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. Because he's bringing us back into the fold. Let me tell you something. Most high doesn't play. Y'all, you know, everybody need to understand that. My son and I, we were talking one day. And uh, he was, you know, recalling the things that Israel had to go through and endure. And um, he was reading all the curses. And he was reading how the Most High, you know, punished Israel. And um, he said, Mama, he said, the Most High is like gangster. And I had to laugh. And another brother said, like he said, the most high is a cold piece. Because he said, my, my son said, mama, that's like if you have us and you name us and then you tuck your name back from us because we were disobedience and you put us in slavery. And you said, now we will be think our ways while we going through this hard time. He said, most high is like gangster. I'm saying, son, you can't even imagine the power. The Bible said the most high is a man of war. And you know, if he chastises his people that he loved, what would he do to the ungodly and the unjust? They don't even stand a chance, the Bible says. They don't stand a chance. They don't stand a chance. And he said unto me, this is verse, uh, we're in verse six now. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. That's why in the book, in the, in the Torah, it says, come, drink, eat with no money. You don't need money to buy anything from the Lord. So we got to receive this salvation freely. We got to receive his spirit freely. See, the most high fight for us. We don't need to keep fighting for ourselves. That's why he told Joshua and many other others in the Torah, stand still. Jehoshaphat, stand still. Moses, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You need not fight in this battle. The Most High is with Israel. That's why it's a wonderful thing to be awake in this hour. Verse 7 says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. See, the sons and daughters of Christ, we got to overcome though. So you, you got to overcome. You got to overcome the temptation. You got to overcome the frustration. You got to overcome the battles. You got to overcome the evil, the wickedness, the sin. You got you have to overcome. See, we got to overcome and live right. See, we got to walk circumspectly. We got to give it all up for the most high. You got to overcome. You, you're not going to be crowned until you overcome. Blessed is he that overcome and receive the crown of life. That's why he told us don't let anybody steal your crown. So we're gonna receive a crown. And we don't wanna we don't wanna think that we in the faith. We wanna know that we in the faith. We wanna know that he awakened us. We wanna know that we have this truth. We wanna know that the precepts were upon precepts, that we understood who we are, that he awakened us to know who we are, so that we could be a part of those that's gonna enter into those twelve gates of Jerusalem. We wanna know. Hallelujah, because the Bible says he knows those that belong to him. We're not faking it till we make it. We already know. We know. We know who we are. Let's go a little further here. We're going to inherit all things, the Bible says. Verse 8 says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So you want to be part of the first death. So your second death is fire. And brimstones. It's a lake of fire. 
It's suffering. Any way you put it, it's suffering. Hot, scorching suffering. You know, you know the Bible say, he that have not the spirit of the Lord is none of his. I mean, there's just people that don't, they're not going to have, they're not going to go with the Lord. They're not going. And they think they're going. And they're not going. Because we just read. The abominable abominable murderers, homongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and liars. They're not going with the most high. Unbelieving in the fearful. They're not going. Because perfect love casts out fear. And he that fear has not been made perfect in his love. So you got to get rid of the fear. Because when you fear, that means you're doing something wrong. You're not living right. It's something you're doing wrong when you fear. See? Because the Lord sent his angels and camped around those that fear him. So we, you know, we have no fear. There's no fear in them that fear the Lord. See, you're walking up in that glory in the spirit of the Lord where you know he that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, he is my strength, he is my fortress. That Psalm 91. Verse 9 says, and there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows. Uh-oh. Now we're talking about the vows now because, see, I'm going to tell you now, we're still in Revelation. The vows is meaning something here, right? Let's read it again. We're in verse 9, Revelation 21 and 9. Revelation chapter 21, verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vows full of the seven last plagues. The seven last plagues. See? And talk with me, saying, Come hither. I will show thee the bride and the lamb's wife. That's Christ's wife. The church. That's the twelve tribes of of Israel. That's the whole house of Israel. The Lamb's wife. The bride of Christ. Let's see what he says. Verse 10 says, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city and the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from Yahweh. Oh, wow. What a mighty experience John the Revelator experienced. Carried away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. And was shown the great city, the holy city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from Yahweh. Verse 11 says, having the glory of Yahweh. Oh, splendid. Can you just imagine? The glory of the Most High was splendid. And her light was like unto a most precious, even like jasper stone, clear as crystal. Look at that. This is talking about the church. You see that? The holy, the holy Jerusalem. Let's go a little further. Verse 12, and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates and at the gates, 12 angels. Oh, probably with swords to make sure no one else go in. But hey, I'm just saying. Let's read it again. Verse 12, and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates and at the gates, 12 angels. See? And names written thereon. Which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. No other nation. Which were the what? Which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. No other nation. No other nation. Now you tell me what other nation. 
Do you hear the Lord say any other nation in this scripture? Let's read it again. Revelation 21 and 12. And had a wall great and high. Yeah, that's why he say, you know, a thief, he can't come in through no other way. He's too high. He's too wide. He's too low. A thief that come, you can't get in no other way in the kingdom. That's why when it comes to the last day and standing before the Lord at the gates, no one else is getting in. No one else is getting in. And had a wall great and high and had 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels. See? Mm -hmm. And names written thereon. It's already there. In the Lamb's Book of Life, I'm sure, of course. Which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. No one else. See, our people have been done so wrong in this world. World. See, they were our test. The heathens were our test. And we were their test. You say, well, how were we their test? I just told you earlier that he that bless Israel will be blessed, and he that curse Israel will be cursed. See. You see. See, you've been blessing the wrong people, America. America, you've been blessing the wrong people. You blessing the people that's over there. They at war now. You've been blessing them all this time. And they not even the people of the book. Come on now. See. And see. You say. Well how, how are we Israel? How were they our test? Well. Because trust me. Our nation could have did some damage. To take our rights back. But you know. So called black people. Like they always say. We, we humble people. And loving people. And we didn't really want to retaliate like that because we think about our family. We think about things that's important. We think about the Lord. We think about our lives in the future. See, the other heathen nation, they don't care about none of that. All they want to do is get all they can get and kill to get it and shed blood to get it and don't care. That's how they are. But then you have some that they have a beam of common sense and wisdom. And if the Lord... You know, open up their understanding. Those are the ones that he will use like he did King Cyrus to understand these are my people. Because the names, their names are not written here. The Bible says these are the 12 tribes of Israel. The names of the 12 tribe of Israel. It's to any other nation. I'm making emphasis on it. It's the 12 tribes of Israel. Verse 13, on the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. You see? Twelve tribes of Israel. And he only came to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel. See, the Most High is renewing. Like, you, there's no spiritual church Israel. It's no spirit to church Israel. Um, the Gentiles, of course, you know, when our nation sinned, they became like heathens. Which sometimes in the Bible and scriptures in the Torah, they're referred to as Gentiles. Right? A few times. So our nation became like them when they went off, uh, when they were scattered in the diaspora, of course. The diaspora. Diaspora. <laughs> diaspora. A lot of people pronounce it different. I always say diaspora. But they, they mingle with these nations and became like them. They mingle with Rome. They mingle with the Greeks. They mingle with a lot of different nations and tuck on their color. When Yahawashah said, you know, uh, the, the, well, the, the apostles first, right? The disciples said, shall he go? Where is he going? You know, Yahawashah said, I got to go you know, to this other place. And they was like, shall he go to disperse and teach the Gentiles? He's talking about the Israelites because they were mingled in with heathen nations throughout the diaspora. And he's coming to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Got to bring them back to know who they are. Just like it's been years, thousands of years, of course, for us since Yahweh left. We didn't know we were Israel. 
Look how hard it was for our nation to wake up after being in captivity so long, being under the hand of persecutors and people that oppress us so long. Look how long it took for us to awaken, but he promised that we were awaken mm -hmm. in, in the last days. And he's kept his word. He's kept his word. Verse 14 says, and the wall of the city had 12 foundations and in them, the names of the 12 apostles of the lamb. You see that those that were beheaded for the gospel's sake, Paul was beheaded, but the other ones, Peter, I think hung upside down and the other apostle just, you know, I don't want to get it backwards, but they all suffered brutal, brutal rather, persecution in those, their death. The 12 apostles, except for John the Revelator. He was the only one that didn't get physically persecuted and died a martyr. But he had to pen this book of Revelation. So we appreciate the Lord sparing him and letting him survive to get this revelation to us. Verse 15 says, and he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the walls thereof, the golden reed. And the city lieth four square and the length is as large as the breadth. And the, he measured the city with the reed 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. All oh, praises. We're going to start right there. We're going to start right there. Hallelujah. The Lord is so good to let us feast on his word. This scripture that say, he that is holy, let him be holy still. He that is unholy, let him be unholy still. Because if you're going to believe, you're going to believe. If you're not going to believe, you're not going to believe. If you don't believe you Israel, you come across this message and you see that it says Hebrew Israelite. That's who we are. You're a so-called black person. You got to believe who you are. This is our only hope. The Lord gave us his word to give us hope. And he is our hope. The faithful elect. I'm going to read that. But Revelation 22 and 11 right now, I want to read this. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. That's Revelations chapter 22, verse 11. Verse 12 says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his, according as his works shall be. He said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed, blessed are they that do his commandments. And it doesn't say and. That they may have right to the tree of life. And may enter in through the gates. Into the city. That's what you want. Because without, he said, verse 15. For without are dogs and sorcerers and harmongers and murderers and idolaters. Whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. See that? I, how shall I have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches? I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit of the bride. And the spirit and the bride say come and let him that heareth say come and let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. All oh, praises. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, Yahweh shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. 
And if any man should take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, Yahweh shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Mm -hmm. False prophets, he going to deal with them. He which testify these things, say if surely I come quickly. Con, even so, come, Lord, Yahweh Shai. Come, the grace of the Lord, Yahweh Shai Christ be with you all. Con, con, all praises to the Most High. I want to read one more verse here. I want to read one more verse here. All praises to the Most High. Thank everyone for tuning in to the broadcast. May the Most High bless you and keep you and give you strength and bless you coming in, going out when you lie down, when you rise up. May He just lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Revelation 14 and 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandment of Yahweh and the faith of Yahweh Shai. Hallelujah. Spirit and the bride say come. Here is the patience of the saints. You have to have patience. Endure to the end. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Wait on him. Embrace your biblical heritage of who you are. Embrace the awakening. Embrace the enlightenment. Embrace the word of the Lord. Of who he have awakened us, us up to understand who we are. It's our only hope, the most powerful hope, the glorious hope. He has given it to us. He laid it on us. It's who we are. We are blessed, highly favored in the Lord, in the Most High. The Most High bless you and keep you. Until next time, Shalom.